episode of the season, Beyond the Whistle. It's a special with the one and only Coach Co, head coach of the Coffee County Trojans. Welcome back. Appreciate you having me. <laughs> it is great to have you back. A lot has happened yeah, since last bit. time we talked. Region champs. Yep. Then now you're about to play for the state championship. So just to start with that, you know, reflecting on the season, what are your emotions looking back on the games that y'all had? Just really proud of our kids. I, I feel like they've just gotten better. You know, they hadn't stayed still. They didn't play down the, the level of competition. They didn't let uh, where we were playing or who we were playing affect them. They just kept getting better and better. And, and uh, they've trusted us and, and they kept practicing hard. They kept lifting hard, you know, and, uh, you know, here's, it's, it's the reward now to get an opportunity to go play for all the marbles and, and uh, not many kids get to do that and and uh, these kids have earned every bit of it. Yeah. And <clears throat> when we talk about Creekside who you guys are playing they've only lost one game you guys are still undefeated right. but when you look at the at the season that you guys had what is a team that I guess is most similar to Creekside you know so viewers who don't know nothing about Creek, so I can kind of get a general idea of the team that you guys are facing. Probably uh, Bainbridge, offensive line wise, uh, skill wise, you know, Ware County, um, mm -hmm. just the speed aspect of it, you know, um, those two teams probably uh, would fit the bill. Jones County a little, but they're bigger than Jones and, and probably have a little better overall team speed, you know, but those three teams would probably uh, be the closest. It's a pretty powerhouse team, yeah, especially right. Bainbridge. You know, right. when you I think when you think of Bainbridge, you immediately think physical oh, contact yeah. and tough. Do you, right. Is that what we're going to see from? Yeah, and they and they can really run, and they're in really good shape. They have some kids that play both ways, you know, um, but it hadn't hurt them, you know. And they beat some really good teams. They beat Warner Robins at Warner Robins. You know, came they were losing 14 nothing last week and came back and and won that game. So you know, they're kind of like us. They don't. You know, throw the sucker in the dirt when things don't start well. They just keep playing, and uh, they got some dynamic playmakers on both sides of the ball, and, and uh, quarterbacks are really, really good, and, and they high point the ball really well. They're probably the best team we played that goes and attacks the football in the air. You know, so our DBs are going to play really well, but, um, you know, we'll be ready to go. And when we talk about your DBs, they've really shown after the season, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, looking at stats, you guys have 10 interceptions this yeah. season, which is, I mean, that's huge. A big number of that, if I'm not mistaken, comes from your guy, Tyree yep. Edwards, right? Yep. Yep. Um, so, you know, talk about that secondary and how crucial they have been to you alls success. Well, they all went and got faster in all season. They're all, they all have a high football IQ. Um, probably the best thing about them is they're so versatile. You know, they can all play corner. Mm -hmm. They can all play both safety spots. They can play rover. They can play in the box. They all tackle well. They're not scared to go down and tackle. You know, last week, uh, uh, Jaquavis Simpkins had a big third down stop on a swing where he got off a block in the flats. Tyreek Edwards had a huge stop on power read play. Mm -hmm. You know, he came from 10 yards deep and made a tackle at the line of scrimmage. So they're all physical. Um, they don't panic playing man to man. You know, Travis Adams has stepped up. Uh, Tyreek, Anthony Paul, Jaden Hancock has had one heck of a year. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes he gets lost in the shuffle, but man, he plays really well on that opposite corner. And then Isaiah Johnson, he, mm -hmm. I mean, he had a pick six, pick six against Ware, had a fumble recovery for a touchdown in the playoffs. So they can all play. They're all, they're all competitive too. They hate to lose. They want to win every rep. They don't like getting scored on, you know. So uh, they're a good group, really good group to have, and I'm really proud of them and, and how they played this year. Yeah. And when I also think of defense, a person that stood out to me, especially in the Jones County game, was LG. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. An absolute unit, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, what are we going to be expecting from him on Saturday, you know, considering the powerhouse that Creekside is on offense? Because they're, they're pretty versatile when it comes yeah. to rushing and also throwing the yeah, ball. He, yeah, you know, we try to move LG around. We try to slice and dice him in there where he's not a you know, sitting target, you know. and. He just plays so hard, you know, and he, and he plays off of blocks. He can, you know, he knows what, what certain blocks he's getting, you know, where the ball's going to go based off that. He plays screens well. His motor, he just doesn't stop, you know. He gets a lot of sacks folding back in when the quarterback steps up in the pocket, you know, and, and uh, just really proud of him. He started at tight end for us last year, and we flipped him over to D. And anytime they wear those catapult vest things, he always – comes out as like the kid that plays the hardest for us and, and uh, somebody's going to get a hidden gem right there in him. I think he's a Mike linebacker mm -hmm. in college. He's 6'2", 234, legit 4'6", 
10 inch broad jump, 34 inch vertical, you know, um, and plays his guts out. And so I'm glad he's on our team. And then when we talk about defense, another one, obviously, big name, Lorenzo Harvey. Right. But talk about some kids that you think have really contributed, but you haven't necessarily heard their names over the loudspeaker. Well, Jaquavius Simpkins, who I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. is just solid, solid as a rock. When we first got here, Coach Granado said, I really like that kid. He mm -hmm. can play for us, and he's just worked his tail off to get to that point. Uh, probably the most unsung guy over there is Pooh Williams, our middle linebacker. He's state runner up, wrestling. Um, if you test him running, you're not going to be wild by his running times. You know, now he's strong in this weight room, but he's played a lot here. You know, he played some as a sophomore. He, he started for us last year as a junior, and he's just always in the right place. You know, he's just always where he's supposed to be. He plays faster than he times. You know, and his eyes are really, really good. Um, you know, he had the big lick against mm -hmm. Ware County, but Pooh, Jaquavius, Isaiah, I mentioned. You know, I, uh, Iverson Gifford at nose guard. Jerker weighs 205. Yeah. You know, or, I mean, 205, and he's slanting and darting and mm -hmm. just, you know, I tell him he's like a fly or a gnat at a family reunion, just won't leave you alone, you know. Yeah. But those those three kids, at the core of who we are defensively, those three kids are really, really important. Yeah. And overall, you know, your defense has just been lights out yeah. all season long. I mean, y'all have had multiple shutouts by right. a significant amount of points. but. And, too, a lot of those points have come from your defense. Yeah. Um, interceptions, phone recoveries, things like right. that. Um, so when we go into a state championship game when both teams are clearly good, yeah. um, what do you think is going to play more of a factor, getting into the end zone or stopping them from getting well, into the Well, you, you want to limit their explosive plays, you know, and just be solid. You know, we haven't turned the ball over all year. I think Maurice got two interceptions. I think we've lost two fumbles. Mm -hmm. So four turnovers in, in 14 games. I mean, that's about as good as you can get. And that helps our defense, you know. And then, uh, like last week, you know, Mikael Smith punting. He, we down two punts inside the five-yard line. One of them led to a safety. Mm -hmm. um, all those things, hidden yardage with special teams, not turning the ball over. And we've got to tackle well. I yeah. mean, they're explosive, and we've got to run our butt to the ball, and there's got to be more than one guy there to make the tackle, you know. And then offensively, just do what we do, play with great tempo and, and uh, try to snap it as many times as we can. And when, you know, talking to people who, who aren't familiar with Creekside, I'm just looking at stats right now. You know, when I say defense is going to play a big part, it's because they are so good in the rush game and the pass game. Right, right. now, they have 2,500 passing yards total. Right. Completion percentage is 60%, right. which is impressive at the end of the season. But I think y'all's is around yeah, roughly we're, the same. We're there. Um, and then rushing yards, they have, where is it at? 3,700, right. which Fred Brown has like over, what, 2,000 just yeah, by himself. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's what I'm talking about when we say that defense, you know, the old saying is defense win championships. Oh, yeah. Do you think that that's definitely going to, that statement is going to see to be true? Yeah, I mean, we've rode, we've rode our defense all year long. And, and the thing I love about this team is we've won games different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, bowls 17-9. Uh, Bainbridge 23-14, uh, Ware County defense, I mean, my goodness, right. held them really to three points. You know, we gave mm -hmm. up a safety with a high snap. But, I mean, we've been in dog fights, We've been in blowouts. We've played in the rain. We've played on turf. We've played on grass. We've played in two unbelievable environments at, at Ware and at Cartersville last week. And mm -hmm. that's the thing that I'm hanging my hat on is, our two biggest games, the two biggest environments at Ware County, 12,000 people there, what they said, you know, our kids played lights out. Last week at Cartersville, I mean, it was slam pack. You got to go up and spend the night. Everything in the world could be against you, mm -hmm. and our kids played lights out. You know, they were ready to go. So we're going to go up early. We're going to take them to the TCC game, and, and yeah. you know, I got a really good relationship with Coach Rogers. We went to OTAs with them, obviously, and so we're pulling for those guys. We're going to let our kids watch and get used to the dome, and then and then just go, uh, you know, go play. It's a football game. When you, you know, speaking of the dome, we'll talk about offense here in a second, but speaking of the dome, obviously you guys are used to playing on a true grass field. Right. Um, Mercedes-Benz is turf. Right. You guys have experience from turf last week. Right. But I wasn't able to make it to the Cartersville game. Did you see a difference in the game play with your guys as they transitioned from a grass to a turf field? You, you know, I thought we would have. We were very fortunate. Tift uh, County let us come over last week and practice two days on their turf field. And uh, there, when I walked on Cartersville's turf, I'm telling you, it was just like Tift's. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and our kids didn't slip and slide or, or anything like that. So we're going to go over to Toombs County um, two times this week and practice on their turf because it's more like uh, the Benz' turf and, and just get our kids on it. And that's all you can do. My buddy works for the Falcons, and, and uh, he talked to their equipment guy, and he said that the playing surface in the Benz is top-notch. You don't have to get any special cleats or anything. He's like, man, it's awesome. So, um, you know, we'll just we'll go over to Tombs and get a little work on turf and then go up there and give it our best shot. Talking to your guys, are they nervous? They don't, they don't seem to be. The state championship game, I mean, I had the date, my notes disappeared on me yeah. and so I can't think of it off the top of my head but it's been a while since coffee's appeared in a state championship yeah, game 17, if I'm not mistaken 17, yeah. Yeah. and so um, you know with that do they even think about the fact that this is essentially their names are going to be in history books right. right this is a big deal to win a state championship game especially from South Georgia right. you know it's hard most teams, a lot of the times, you know, we have top-notch talent down here, but still at the same time, it's hard to get yeah. against those Atlanta teams. And right. you guys have been perfect all yeah. year. You know, they, um, Tico Smith, one of our guards, he texted me last night and said, Coach, it just feels like a normal week, a normal game. And, and really, you know, um, I've got a lot of experience with this. I've been to nine or ten of them. I think every coach on our staff is coaching at least one state championship game. And the thing – that we're trying to do is just keep it normal. We're, you know, we're not playing the game today. We're not going to win or lose the game today. Yeah. Just go take care of the weight room today. Go take care of practice today. And they did a great job of that. And then tomorrow bring us on set of issues, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, just go day by day. Again, I really think this team is different. Um, I think if they were going to be nervous or worried, I think it would have showed at, at Ware County. Mm -hmm. I think it would have showed last week when Cartersville started making a little comeback and mm -hmm. defense just said, all right, that's enough. You know, we, they've done enough. Let's finish it, you know. So I expect our kids to go play well, you know, yeah. and, and, and have a good time. End of the day, it's a football game. It's not life or death. And I think our kids play with confidence because they know just, just go play your guts out. I'm not going to love you any more or any less, man. I'm going to love you regardless because of who you are, not what you do. You know, and uh, they've done everything we've asked them to do. And again, they've earned the right to go do this. So, so go get after it. You know. Yeah. When we talk about offense, obviously, yeah. Fred Brown yeah. is clearly, you know, that guy. Everybody yeah. knows Fred Brown. They know what he can do. They've seen what he can do. He's a beast. Right. CBS 44 Offensive Player of the Year. Right. Big honor. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But, um, you know, really talk about Fred and just his ability to literally get out there and it's a different kid people don't understand off the field he's like this teddy bear right. that is just so sweet and yeah. so like he's not this big ferocious yeah i'm gonna run you over type of guy he's just he's more quiet on this quieter side and so talk to me about fred and just overall his performance this year and how proud you are of this kid well <laughs> i think you know preparing himself to get to this this year was totally different um, than when we first got here. You know, me, me and Fred butted heads some, you know. Uh, St. Augustine game last year, I left him at home, you know, and uh, I think he learned from that and he bounced back and he had a tremendous off season and did everything he asked him to do. I don't think people will understand how difficult it is as a 17, 18 year old kid to go line up every Friday knowing you're the marked man. Mm -hmm. You know, like like we're playing Cass and they're walking off during pregame and they start hollering that they're going to knock his knees loose. And you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Which, I, I mean, I tackle him down there too. But, I mean, mm -hmm. um, he knows every week. I mean, he's the focal point. Their whole defensive game plan all week has been find where zero's at, rally to zero, you know. And so for him to be able to respond every week and play his guts out, I think that's the thing that impresses me the most. And he's done it. 14 straight weeks, he's got over 100 yards, you know, 14 straight weeks. Now, he's had help. Our O-line's gotten better and better, and, and they get after you. And Maurice Hansley's playing at probably the best he's played since he's been here, you know, and Pat McCall and some of those other kids. But the thing that impresses me with Fred, it's hard, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm not comparing him to LeBron James, but when the Lakers come to town, it doesn't matter who you're, going, who you're yeah. playing, you're getting their best shot because mm -hmm. they're playing against LeBron. Same thing with Jordan and guys like that. But this is a 17-year-old young man, you know, that's facing that, and he's just, he's done wonderful with it. Yeah. And when we talk about Maurice, you know, 
the quarterback is the anchor. You know, the oh, entire yeah. game is designed around the quarterback position. Right. You know, and so that is essentially the most important position on the field, and he's only, what, a junior? Yeah, he's a senior. I wish oh, he was a junior. He, oh, he's a senior now? Yeah. I keep, I keep getting everybody mixed up, but, yeah. um, I mean, he's a senior, but over the years, like, we've just seen him grow yeah. so much. And I think this year has really been a year that you've seen that growth. And I think this is the year that he really has sat down and realized, like, all right, you know, this is my team. Yeah. Have you seen – is that a valid statement? Yeah, Have you and seen our, that from him? I think the thing with Maurice is our kids love him. They respect him. Mm -hmm. And he's so – I talk about Ant Palk on defense, and all our defense is like this now with the innate ability to just play the next play. But Maurice has it too. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get rattled. He can make. He can throw a pick, which he's only thrown two. Mm -hmm. Or he can throw a 90-yard bomb. He's, he's just going to be Maurice yeah. on the sideline. And that's what you want as a quarterback, you know. And uh, – He's not real loud and vocal, but our kids respect him. They believe in him, you know. And so um, he's a quiet leader, but he's a heck of a leader. You know exactly what you're going to get out of Maurice Hansley every day. In the class, in the weight room, on that practice field, he's the same guy every day, you know. And, you know, when we come to a state championship game, like you said, your kids say, like, oh, it's just another game, right? But from a coach's standpoint, I think we all know. It's not just another game, right. right? It's a state championship game, and right. it's one of those things where anything can happen. So, as a coach, what are you? What do you most prepare yourself and your coaching staff for? That maybe the average person wouldn't really think to even prepare for right. going into a state championship game. I think you have to be careful, especially with having extra days. And me and Coach Rogers talked about this the other day. You got to be careful not to, you know, run run them where their legs are shot. You've got to be careful pregame not to waste all your energy because it's different. It's just different. You know, you're going to be hyped up, but you're, you got to, you're doing everything GHSA, GHSA tells you. You know, you're not at your home stadium or some away stadium. You come out when they tell you, you, you know, you're doing everything, like, you know, like Super Bowl. The halftime show is longer. Everything's just different, you know. And I think that's what's good about our staff. Everybody's been in these games. You just try to make it as normal as possible. You know, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the same things on the football field. It really is. It always does. You know, and just the quicker we can make it a football game, the better off we'll be. And, and uh, we hadn't practiced any longer this week. We hadn't changed anything. We're going to do what we do. And, and uh, it's been good enough. And, and we just got to go play our guts out. You think that's also important? Because I think a lot of people would think that, oh, you got to train harder for a state championship game. Or some people are like, mm. Let's lay off a little bit in practice. We don't want anybody getting hurt in practice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like lay yeah. it off just a little bit. Or I think people have different ways of going into it. But do you think that's important to keep kids in the same routine? Absolutely, as much as you possible. Know, if it's not yeah. broke, don't fix it kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I mean, you got to be smart. But our kids are smart. I mean, they're football smart. They try to stay up as much as possible. But I learned my lesson one year at Madison. We backed off big time when we got to the playoffs. And I felt like we lost our edge. You yeah. know, we, did, we started – not playing really well in the second round. And we escaped out of there in the second round, but then the semifinals, we had penalties we hadn't had all year. We just did things we hadn't done all year. We didn't stay sharp. So we're lifting hard, you know. We're, our practices are staying the same. You know, today we did a Monday practice, you know, which is heavy install and things like that, you know. And tomorrow we'll, we'll have a, a Tuesday practice and then Friday they'll have off, and then Saturday will be our Monday, and two, you know we'll have our regular game week. But I think it's important routine. All of us like routine, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it's important to keep it as normal as possible. And I think a lot of people, you know, obviously you, your program looks like it just has it all put together. But I think, especially you know, with my background being behind the scenes too, right. no program is perfect, right? right? And everybody goes through something um, every season. But from what I've seen, you know, obviously there hasn't been much adversity on the field aside from maybe a little nooks and, you yeah. know, injuries every now and then. But what's some adversity that your kids have had to overcome, you know, either outside of football or on the field that people wouldn't really know about? Uh, you know, we lost some kids. Some We, we lost a couple of kids right before the season started, you know, and I won't get into all that. But yeah. um, two kids that we love, you know, and, and, and that will be back with us here soon. But – um, and two kids our, our kids really love and have grown up playing with, and, and we lost those kids, and so other kids had to step up. We, we lost a starting D lineman that um, during an open week transferred out of here. You know, uh, mom moved, and, and he transferred out of here. And, and, but, but here's what I did. We didn't, we didn't talk about all that, mm -hmm. you know, because there's no need in crying over spilt milk, and, and uh, you, you, I can't control it, yeah. so I'm not going to sit there and, 
whine about it and, and harp on it, we're going to go, yeah. you know, next man up. And that's what we tell these kids. Bad things are going to happen in life, unfortunate things. You know, your wife may get sick. What are you going to do, leave her? Your, your, your kid may get sick. I mean, you're going to be dad or you're going to run from it, you know. And, and uh, that's what football, to me, makes it great. That's what it teaches you because if you do it long enough and you do it over and over and over, it becomes who you are. And that's what these kids have done. I mean, they just, again, I mean, they don't blink an eye out there on the football field. But, like, when all that stuff happened, man, we just kept rolling. You know, and, and that's what you got to do. I mean, life doesn't stop for anybody, and, and uh, our kids have done a really good job of keeping the main thing the main thing. And last time we talked, um, <coughs> way back, and I think it was the Jenkins game, yeah. was last time we did Beyond the Whistle, you said that, you know, this Coffee County position is your dream job, right? right? Um, so since then, you know, how, especially during playoff season, because I think playoffs is really when people start really coming out, right. and start really, you know, rooting especially once everybody saw that, oh my gosh, like we could probably go to the state championship yeah. game. You know, talk to me about this dream job that you have, the people and the support and the community as they're rallying around these boys going into next week. Yeah, I mean, again, you, you pull into Waycross, Georgia at 5.30 mm -hmm. and the streets are lined with coffee fans and wear fans and you know, I told our kids, man, not everybody gets to experience this. I've been in nine, ten state championship games, and I don't know that that night mm -hmm. wasn't more electric than any football game I've ever coached in. And then last week when you come out for pregame at 530, whatever, and it's cold and it's raining, and there's 2,000 people from Coffee County, Georgia, in the stands yeah. shaking those cans. I mean, that's special. That doesn't happen yeah. everywhere, you know. And uh, like I told our kids, they – that's why we always walk over to our fans and they hold their helmets up and thank them. Mm -hmm. You know, we thank our band, you know, we thank mm -hmm. our cheerleaders for coming. But I mean, it's a great place. It's a unique place. I went to my daughter's chorus concert last night, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. There's 150 kids mm -hmm. singing up there. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a great place. I'm, gl I'm glad the good Lord placed me here, I can tell you that. It's a diamond in the rough of, oh, yeah. of Douglas, Georgia. You yeah. know what I mean? A lot of people are like, Douglas, that's out in the middle of nowhere, but I'm like, Dude, that's that's one of the best types of places to oh, have yeah. a high school community, right? Yeah. And you know, even me, Co Coffee County's just loved and embraced me. They've oh, invited yeah. me to tailgates. They've yeah. invited me to yeah. everything. And um, you know, coffee's just been awesome. Yeah. But um, getting you know towards the end, when we talk about um, this season, you know, especially for your seniors, this a state championship game is. Seriously, it's it's almost like a once in a lifetime type of deal, right? right? Not everybody. I didn't get to experience it. Right. A lot of people don't, and um, it's very much a blessing to be able to experience something Absolutely. like this. Absolutely. Um, and so, especially to your seniors, what's um, the type of experience? What do you want those kids to get most out of this season and this experience as they're playing for a state championship game? Just, you know, win or lose. Just to, to you know, when we started this thing. And I told them this the other day. Um, when we got done last year and lost Cartersville, and two, three days later we're in the weight room, I told them we are going to build a championship football program, not just a team, and y'all are going to be the ones that do it. You're going to be the ones that start it. And I said probably just a few of you really believe that when we started. And then when we went to OTAs and, and battled with Lee County and uh, TCC, that helped our kids see that their work had helped them, you know, get to that level. And then uh, beating Bainbridge, you know, that that was another step. You know, then bowls, we lose our quarterback. We're losing at halftime, and our defense just plays lights out, gives up nine points, and we find a way to win with our backup quarterback. That was a huge step. And then I think when we went into Waycross and you beat the defending state champs, the way we did, mm -hmm. I think it. I think all of them were then like, all right, we can do this. Yeah. You know, we got a shot if we'll just listen and keep getting better. And I, I just want them to leave here knowing they can be anything they want to be. I don't care, you know, it doesn't matter when it, what anybody else thinks or says to you. You can go be anything you want to be. It, it's work. Mm -hmm. Work wins. And um, they know how to work. They're not scared to work, you know. And I want them to chase every dream they've ever had you know, with everything they got, and I want to be good dads and good husbands and uh, enjoy this ride. I mean, we're not going to sit around here and 
how like we're going to a funeral, you know. And, and that's the same thing we played Ware County, you know. I told mm-hmm. them, don't come in here pregame trying to be all quiet and all this. Like, yeah. you know, just be loose and free like we've been all year long. Once we get to the stadium, we'll take your phones, and then it's time to lock in and rock and roll. Yeah. And uh, they've done that, you know. And I just want to believe they can be anything yeah. they set their mind to, you know. Um, and that's what football teaches, you know. Win, lose, or draw, this would be one of the greatest – years of my life being just being with these kids every day they're fun to be around they're fun to coach and my last question is you know I think it's very apparent that this team is a true true team like you can tell on the field like they're gonna go to war right Right. they're gonna go to war for each other you say one wrong thing to their team and they're you know they're all coming at you right and it's I think that's just a love and a bond that you've built here in this program and, you know, I've seen a little bit behind the scenes of it at practice and, and things like that. But, you know, tell me about the, the times that you've really realized, you know, wow, like these kids, they really do love each other. And it's almost like a moment where you're like, I didn't teach them that. You yeah. know what I mean? I didn't, I, we taught them to, to, to you know, band together, <coughs> love together, but not like that. You know what I mean? What's like a unique memory or one or more memories that you've realized? Well, I, wow. think, I think really, you know, I told somebody this today. When we won the other night, so many of my former players from Madison mm-hmm. sent me texts or messages or, or, or got on Facebook and, you know, man, coach, congratulations, I love you. You know, Thanksgiving, we had our Wednesday Thanksgiving meal after practice and, and we go around the room and I tell everyone of them, you gotta say something you're thankful for. And, and Fred Brown says, man, coach, I'm thankful for my mama and, and I'm really thankful for Coach Bester. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we're relationship builders. The men I brought with me are relationship builders. The men I kept on this staff are relationship builders. It's more than football, you know. Um, just the joy on their faces last week or the texts you get, you know, uh, one of our young sophomores and, you know, the other night, Coach, I just want to thank you for staying on me and not letting me be who I wasn't supposed to be and not giving up on me and, and you've made me tougher and you know, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel now, and, and you're going to get everything I got moving forward. And, and that's why you do it. That's the thing people, mm-hmm. you know, and I love our fans, and they get to see Friday nights, but we get to see, you know, Sunday through Saturday with a lot of these kids, you know. And, uh, you know, Pat McCall, just in the adversity he's went through, um, you know, he just went through some things, and then he hurts his knee mm-hmm. at practice and has to miss a couple games, and he works his tail off. They were hoping he'd come back for the Ware County game. That joker makes it back a week early, you know. Yeah. And how he played the other night. Just seeing guys fight through mm-hmm. adversity and and uh, and being good dudes. Mm-hmm. They make good grades. They stay out of trouble, you know. And a lot of them deal with stuff at, at home that people have no idea, mm-hmm. you know. And, and uh, just seeing how they turn out as young men. And, you know, they can change their life forever. They can change their family's life forever. And... Uh, that's what I'm here for. You know, I want to win this state championship bad for this community. I mean, bad. They've been great to Mike Coe and his family. But those kids are the reason I'm here, and those kids are what's most important to me. And, and uh, you know, we'll know if we did a good job 10 years from now, how they turn out. And, but I think, we'll, I think we'll see they're going to be pretty good dudes here, you know, 10 years from now. That's a good note to end it on. Thanks, <laughs> Is there anything else that no, you want good. to mention about the game? No. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on all my social medias to keep up with future episodes of Beyond the Whistle. See you guys next time.